Hey guys, so um, we're just going to go over a different strategy for running a vertical stack. There is a bunch of different ways you can run a vertical stack, um, and this is just one of several, um, but this is the one I like to run, and I'd like everybody to be on the same page as far as understanding it, even to the point of where they can explain what I'm about to do. So um, my theory is basically that if everybody can explain every position, then you should be able to theoretically play that position and being all on the same page is the end goal when it comes to an offense or a defense or any sport. And so um, as a general rule of thumb, if everybody understands this better, they'll be able to execute it better, and uh, that's the objective. So here's a vertical stack. Um, we're scoring this direction, and normally we would just you know go out, come under, hit that person, the next person go out, come under, and hit that person. What I like to get away from that a little bit, uh, I'll, I'll summarize this whole offense and then kind of break it down a little bit. I like to do uh, attack the break side. Um, so this is the force side, the place that they're forcing to, this is the break side. Um, and I'd like us to get into the habit of, as a goal for our team, not a hard and set rule, but as, an, a, as a general principle, we're constantly looking to try to get the disc over to this side of the field. So here's a couple of ways that we would do that primarily. There's a few other exceptions. Um, stack placement. Uh, the stack would normally be, if the forces flick, like here, I, I've made these big, so this isn't very to scale, but um, anyway, bear with me. The, the stack would normally be over here-ish um, to allow a lot of room here for us to come out and, and maneuver and, and try to get open. Nothing wrong with that, but for this type of vertical stack offense, I'd like the stack to pull a little more in line with the disc. Not completely, just a little bit more. So I, I pulled that over here to the middle, and it actually will shift less It'll be less extreme from side to side. You won't have to move as much. So that's a good thing too. Um, and then when we're attacking, uh, when we're attacking the break side, one of the first things if I was picking up what I would look for is this little shot right here to the front of the stack. It's so often that this player on the front of the stack who's defending will pull into the lane to try to stop that person coming underneath. So this is usually an open shot if we just look for it, but both have to be looking for it. Anyway, and from here, if the disc does go from there, and all of a sudden gets dished over here, then this person can either make a cut out, open on the break side, or under, and they'll be open on the um, break side as well, because the defender's on the wrong side. Or on the fourth side, anyway, it's not the wrong side. So that's one, and then another option is that the disc gets dished to here. This person, a lot of times, will um, be able to come up here like this, they'll dish it out to here, this comes to there, and then they can hit either one of those two options as well. It is pretty imperative that the stack be placed well and that not anybody else cut out of turn. I know that's a basic principle, but it happens all the time because everybody's like, oh, they just went to the break side and they all run. So you gotta be disciplined about that. Um, the other thing would be if, say, this person's pretty tight, um, the defender's pretty tight on the front of the stack and we can't hit that option or the mark's too good or whatever, well, that would mean that um, this would be our other option that we look for. Let's just assume for a second that the person's up here trying to prevent this strike cut, right? I know this is really close and jumbled, I'm just doing that for the camera, but let's just say that I get the disc over here. That's my other objective, especially if we're on a sideline. Get off the sideline, get this person, work the break side. Well, the same thing. You can go deep, you can come under. Very, very important that they be watching to know where to go, because if we swing the disc and they come over to here, you've done nothing. Um, anyway, so um, there are instances where neither of these two people will be open on the first look, uh, as far as... Um, they'll have to move to create space. So we all know that this person will typically go strike like this. And as they've cleared that space, this is, mind you, the only time that the front of the stack is going to come off ever with this offense is to fill that space that, that that one player just went strike, this player will not come dump. And as a general rule of thumb, I think it's easier to hit this on the around than I think it is to hit the upline strike because the defense is guarding the upline strike. It's the four side. If they're open, obviously you would hit that and then look for the power position huck. That's, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but anyway, as a general rule of thumb though, I think that this one is easier to hit when we should look for that around to then attack the break side. Um, if for some reason, while I'm on this point here, when I said about the front of the stack, the only time they'll come off to, is to fill this spot. If for some reason this person gets the disc, do, 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 do. it swings over, they do not come off to get the continuation, they don't. Except in rare circumstances. The back will still come off. So if this person has, say, made a beat cut, and it swings over, the next person in the back will come over to the break side, or go deep, whatever. 
Um, so that's just an important thing to do as well. A lot of times we'll have the front come off because they're there, but that's, that's not, it's not that it's bad, it's just not the best. Uh, it'd be better because we'll get a huge gain from the undercut. Anyway, um, so that's the main part of the offense, and I think the main thing that we need to have on our minds for uh, how to move the disc side to side. Now, as far as starting our offense, we're, there's nothing wrong with looking for one of these as your first options. It's great, actually. But you can still, as a cutter, start your cuts. And this is another thing I want to address because we'll normally just go out and come under. Very predictable, not bad or not wrong, but I'd like to change that so that we know that our first option, unless they are like this, defending you, is not going to be deep. Um, you know, they're going to, um, this, this cutter, this offensive cutter, is going to go for a deep cut, all, unless you are super open. Go deep. If it's open, we'll hit you. If not, you're going to pull that defender with you. This next person can come under if they want, um, especially if this defender goes off to help with the defense, which in mixed ultimate happens all the time. If a girl goes deep, the next guy in this act is going to go with it to try to cover, and this person here will be super open. So there's nothing wrong with that. But after you make your um, cut here, you then turn and go to the S cut. If the mark is flat on the disc, we'll just throw it to that S cut side. But it, let's just assume you don't get it, and that's fine. Still make the cut, still run the route. And then you're gonna come underneath to clear the deep space on the break side. And by then, if we haven't thrown that, three or four stalls have obviously gone. We've had that deep cut option, we've had the undercut option, but now we're going to hit one of these options or run our reset route. If we have attacked the break side correctly, and the disc does come over here, you're now open on the break side for a huge gain. A huge game. And so that's the route I'd like us to get in the habit as cutters to run if you're the uh, back of the stack, particularly when it starts. Now, again, it's going to change. It's going to look different all the time, but this is a general principle of how I think that if we make this a habit, we'll see this more and more often and it will be easier and easier. Um, one of the, there's many reasons I like this offense, but one of the main reasons is kind of the, the obvious one, which is um, it eliminates poaches, it makes them irrelevant. If somebody poaches way off here in the middle, who cares? You know, we're not attacking here, we're attacking over there. So um, if, if you're poached, this would be one of the section, exceptions where maybe the back doesn't cut. We just get the disc to, to over to this side, however we do it, whether it's one or the other. And then um, this person here can just go straight out, there's no defender over there. And if the defender does tighten up uh, because they see it's about to happen, well then we can cut to the fourth side again. So anyway, there's a bunch of options there, but that. That's a reason I, I love this offense. It, it's always attacking where the defense is not. It requires a little more discipline uh, as far as stack placement, a little more creativity, a little more Frisbee IQ. And it requires um, everybody being really disciplined about the stack placement and, and understanding what the objective is. And maybe a little bit more difficult throws because you're breaking the mark sometimes. But if that is done correctly, it's gonna be awesome. If, if for whatever reason we ever get the disc over to, like say somebody coming on the underneath side and it just goes to here and they swing it to there. Um, the whole stack will push. You'll be, it'll be super easy every time. I'm not going to draw the whole thing out, but it'll be super easy every time to just dump it and then swing it again back to the fore side. And so the whole movement of the field will look kind of like a horseshoe. But that's not important for now. Case in point is this is the main portion that I want to, to explain. Um, attack the break side, align the stack properly, look for the front of the stack, look for the reset, or have them switch. Um, and then cutters be really attentive and disciplined uh, that the back of the stack knows to go four side or break side depending upon what the disc is doing. Um, I think that's the main thing. Um, a byproduct is what's going to happen with this is if teams are good, they'll, they'll adjust their defense and probably go zone on us, which is fine, we'll just play zone. And if it be that, they'll go back to man, but they'll probably be tighter in which it's going to be bread and butter and we'll be able to get open on the four side in that case. I'm talking really fast here, but uh, trying not to make this video very long. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. We'll go over that in practice um, and uh, cover any questions and stuff there. So thanks, guys.